Dad, under some things. Go for it. <laughs> I need a glow up to help me. I'll help you. Episode 14, Acid Base Reaction. For this experiment, you're going to need some baking soda and vinegar, something to mix them in, a small cup to hold the baking soda, a measuring spoon, a candle, some matches, and I also went ahead and got a jar to hold the products of the reaction to save for another experiment. So for a lot of people, this is really their first experience with chemistry, and mixing baking soda and vinegar together is a pretty classic reaction. And what's actually being mixed together is an acid, uh, acetic acid, which is vinegar, and a base, which is baking soda here, also known as sodium bicarbonate. And when you mix them together, you get fizzing or bubbling. And this is definitely evidence uh, of a chemical reaction when you mix a solid and a liquid together and you get a gas, a different state of matter. So after it settles down here, what we're going to do is light a match and light our candle. And then we're actually going to pour the gas from the reaction onto our candle. And as you see, the candle's going to go out. Pause here. science! Before we even get to the acid-base reaction, we have to take a look at the atom. And what makes an atom special or an element unique is the amount of protons, neutrons, and electrons it's made of. Let's start with helium, number two on the periodic table. Famous for making balloons buoyant in air and maybe lesser known for making up a quarter of the mass of our star, the Sun. For the most part, helium atoms have two protons, two neutrons, and two electrons. Protons and neutrons are at the center of the atom, part of the nucleus, which is orbited by the tiny electrons. Protons have a positive charge, and electrons have a negative charge. Neutrons have a neutral, or no charge. Electrons do have mass, but they are extremely small compared to that of the nucleus, so the mass of a single atom of any element is determined mostly by its proton and neutron quantity. Another important concept we'll need to talk about when dealing with acids and bases is the ion. And an ion is an atom or molecule with a different number of protons than electrons, giving it a positive or a negative net charge. Because of their electron structure, some elements and molecules are more likely to take or give electrons to the surrounding area. Number 11 on the periodic table, sodium, has a single electron in its outer shell, which is easily stripped away by atoms with a single vacancy in their outermost electron shell like chlorine. These two elements combine to form an ionic bond, uh, which you know as table salt. When dissolved in water, salt will break into the sodium ion and the chloride ion, which are positively and negatively charged, respectively. Lastly, I just want to point out that in any chemical reaction, matter is never created or destroyed. It's simply rearranged into different atoms and molecules. So let's take a look at the difference between acids and bases. Vinegar is a mixture of mostly water and acetic acid. Acids are chemicals that release hydrogen ions when dissolved in water. Acetic acid is a weak acid because only a small amount of its molecules will do this. What makes bases different from acids is that they release a negatively charged ion into water called hydroxide. Baking soda, or sodium bicarbonate, is a weak base, meaning that only some of its molecules will release this hydroxide ion. When we mix together our weak acid and base, they react like this. In general, acid-base reactions result in the formation of carbon dioxide, water, and salt. The observable reaction is the formation of carbon dioxide gas, which you see as fizzing or bubbles. The second part of this experiment involves the collection of carbon dioxide molecules above the surface of the solution. Carbon dioxide actually displaces or pushes out the existing gas molecules that are there. Pause here. The answer to this question can be found by looking at the atoms of elements 6, 7, and 8 on the periodic table, carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen. Carbon is made up of 6 protons and 6 neutrons, giving it an atomic mass of 12. It also has 6 electrons, but remember that relative to the size of the nucleus, the electrons are extremely small. Meanwhile, nitrogen has 7 protons and 7 neutrons, bringing its atomic mass to about 14. Oxygen has 8 protons and 8 neutrons for a total of 16. Now we can apply that same math to the molecules that we're using here, and oxygen has two oxygen atoms, making a total of 32. Nitrogen has two nitrogen atoms for a total of 28. And looking at carbon dioxide, we'll see that it's the heaviest, and that's because it's made up of one carbon and two oxygens for a total molecular mass of 44.
Gases can behave very much like liquids of different densities. The less dense material will float on top of the heavier matter, just like oil on water. When poured, the heavier carbon dioxide gas displaces oxygen required for combustion, and the flame is extinguished. Again, no atoms were created or destroyed in this process. They were simply rearranged into different molecules or physically moved to a different place. As always, a big thank you to my family. I hope you enjoy your acid-base reaction. Let me know how it goes.